Hello everyone, it's Tom from CoaJoint here and this video is going to be on serializing complex data structures in Unity. So the method that I'm going to be showing you today very quickly actually is um, something that I've used in two editor extensions that I've been working on lately and um, it's actually been very convenient and very simple to, do, um, to implement. So the first point I should make is what exactly I mean by a complex data structure. Well for the for, for the purposes of this video I'm going to say that a complex data structure is anything that's not simple data so simple data is stuff like floats doubles integers uh, color data um, maybe a slider I think data gets complex when you're considering references uh, structures um, uh, sort of polymorphism and things like that um, lists um, dictionaries these are things that uh, may cause you problems, I'm not saying that they necessarily will, but may cause you problems when it comes to serialization uh, in Unity because of the fact that you have this layer, uh, this interface between C++ and C Sharp. Now the way that Unity um, serializes data or, or, or serializes data correctly for the C++ layer is, is through the serializable attribute and with the scriptable object class and that's what we're actually going to be using here. Um, so I think the easiest way to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about is to dive straight into this particular example here uh, which is taken from my uh, editor extension action. So the data structure that we're going to serialize is uh, in this project known as a library and a library can contain many networks and a network can contain many skills so you have this sort of free tier uh, data structure um, which uh, as you can see can be quite complex because you can have relationship uh, sort of these connections between these skills there's that sort of uh, there's floating point data stored in this skill as well um, there's a string there's other there's a value of these connections and so when we serialize this object we don't know what the actual form of the data is going to take so we don't know how many networks are going to be stored in this we don't know how many skills are going to be in that network and so on and so forth so the approach to serialization that I've taken in this particular project is to serialize the library as a byte array now effectively what I do is I have my action library um, all written as a separate class and then I serialize the byte array, uh, the um, the library, sorry, as a byte array, and then that byte array is written into an action asset, which is a script which inherits some scriptable object, and then that action asset is saved as a um, using the create asset method, I believe it's called. Um, I have to take a look in a moment. And now that might sound quite complicated, but for me it was I, I like the fact that I could compartmentalize the the process of actually serializing and storing instead of the other way to do it which would be to actually write the action library class as a scriptable object and then save that directly it meant that I could have all of the stuff which was to do with my editor extension separate from the way I was actually going to store the um, the library in on the disk so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move over to Mono Develop to show you some of the parts well, in fact all of the parts that are involved in the uh, serialization of an action library. So here we are in Mono Develop, and this is the action library script. You can see um, here that this action uh, library contains an array of action networks and also some methods to um, add action networks, delete action networks, and so on and so forth. So this is the class that we want to serialize. Uh, we're going to serialize it in first of all as an action asset and then we're going to store that action asset on the hard drive now this action asset is a scriptable object and all it contains is a byte array um, and this byte array is sort of initialized using a property here and um, it's really as simple as that now as I described a moment ago what I could have done is I could have just got rid of the action asset and just had an action library make it inherit from scriptable object and then from there I could have um, written all of the details about the class uh, and all that sort of stuff and and then could have just saved that to the um, to the hard disk using create asset but uh, I think I'm right in saying that that wouldn't have worked so well with polymorphism and that it would have been difficult to get around that 
um, and perhaps interfaces as well. So that's another reason why um, it would have been perhaps better in this situation with such a complex data structure to use this approach rather than another one. And uh, like I said before, there's obviously the I can write my action library script, which contains just stuff about my editor extension, and keep that separate from the way I'm storing it. So what I'm going to do now is show you the creation process of making a action library and then serializing it and then saving it on the hard drive. And then we'll show you how that data is loaded and how that data is saved. So to create an action library, we go to create and then uh, click action skill library here. And what that will do effectively is call this method called create new asset here. Um, the details that are important for if you're learning this process in this method is that first of all, we create a script, this action asset using the create instant method, which is a static method in the scriptable object class, instead of using the normal constructor. And the reason why we do that is because um, the initialization or the construction process for a scriptable object is different to a normal class in Unity. There has to be some stuff done behind the scenes um, with IDs and things like that. Um, there's a good video from Unite about this sort of stuff uh, available on uh, YouTube. Now the next important detail here is that um, the library data, that byte array when we that we saw in the action asset uh, script a moment ago, we initialize that by creating a new action library and then we call the get data method on it. And what get data does effectively is call this method here um, called get data in this code joint project asset. And the get data method effectively what it does is it, it serializes an action library and then wraps it in this this sort of code joint project asset class and then serializes that and the reason why we do that is because then this project asset the reason why I did that sorry is that this project asset this code joint project asset um, could hold it in more information that is important so for example if there are several versions of the software uh, we might, might want to differentiate between um, assets created in version 1 and version 2 so just to show you uh, the actual code that does this, uh, first of all we create a code joint project asset, then we set up a memory stream and a binary formatter, we serialize the, the action library that we're passing in as an argument to the memory stream and, and then we, um, we take that memory stream uh, we cast it to a byte array or we, we convert it to a byte array and then we save that in this uh, the data byte array here in the code joint project asset and then we serialize this the whole project asset which we created up here and then we return that so effectively what we're doing here is we're returning the sort of an empty action library as a byte array which we then store in the library data here so now we've got a um, action asset which is loaded with just a, an empty um, action library, and then we call the asset data dot create asset method to create a file a dot asset file containing this empty library data. So let's just do that process quickly to see that it works. And uh, there it is, my new school library one because there's already one created here. So that's the actual process of the of creating the asset um, and serializing um, just an empty library. But how do we load this uh, library from the hard disk into memory so that we can edit it and uh, and then how do we save it and so on and so forth? Now to load a action library from a dot asset file, we need to deserialize the library from the action asset that is stored inside the dot asset file that we see here. So what I've done um, for the extension method that I've been working on here called action, um, when I highlight a object in the um, project view, this brings up a custom um, editor, uh, sorry, inspector extension here, and I can press this edit library button, and what that will do is it will load the um, action library from the hard disk into memory. Now, what happens when I press this edit library button is that it calls this uh, method here called edit library. Now what edit library does is it takes the current selection in the project view, so it takes the active object, it casts it to an action asset, and this is one of the advantages of scriptable objects, you can uh, do stuff like this, it's, it's probably one of the best, best features about it, and then we're going to load that into a, 
a um, action asset variable in this class here called action menu. Now, current asset is a um, property. So if I just go to its declaration here, you'll see that when we set the value of current asset, um, we also call a method here called load data, and that's a method on the, uh, it's a static method on the action library class. Now, load data, just like uh, in a similar way to get data, effectively what that does is it calls this method in CoJoint project in the CoJoint project asset class here, which deserializes the the data. So if I quickly go back into action menu, uh, you see that the current asset which we've just set, we take its library data, that byte array which is stored in the action asset, we pass it to this load data method, and that eventually gets passed to uh, as the argument of this load method here. This uh, So we pass a byte array to that. So remember when we serialized uh, the action library first of all, we serialized that into a project asset and then we serialized that project asset. So we've got to undo both of those processes. So the first thing we do is we deserialize the, the data we've passed which is a co joint project asset and then what we do from that is we then deserialize the data contained inside that uh, co-joint project asset and then cast it to an action library. And that is effectively the whole de deserialization process. Um, what the, that data, that loaded data is then passed to, uh, is set as an action library here, which is then used to load all of these editor windows and so on and so forth. Um, saving the action library is a similar sort of process so if I just open up the correct class here the save library process what that effectively does is it takes it, it calls a get data get data method on an action library so it gets the same um, gets the the action library stored in memory at the moment it gets the data as a byte array and then it takes the current asset which we've set in action menu here, this thing here, and then we take that current asset and we place the current byte array, the current library data, with the new data that we've just got from um, the action library that we're editing at the moment. So that's how we save and edit a library that we've just been editing. Um, so let me just show you that working very quickly. It's already loaded in memory actually. Um, so here it is, and you can see that we've deserialized all of these classes, all of these skills and um, all of the information contained within that library. So I hope I haven't rushed through this too quickly. I hope you understand the process and you can see the advantages of, of deserializing and serializing in this way when you're dealing with fairly complex data structures. Um, if you have any comments or have any questions or feedback or if there's any information that I withheld or anything like that, then please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the video, found it useful, then please don't be afraid to give me a like. And um, thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll catch you guys pretty soon. Cheers.